Never miss more than once. Go on, go on Friday. Get right back on. And then if you miss on Monday again, go back on Wednesday. Yeah, just, you know what I mean? Yeah. At least you're still trying, you know? Uh, so I guess that's that was a nice piece of advice, for, well, I thought, from on. James. You're not still trying. You're still doing. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. Over a year ago, we had our second episode come out. At called, least. Uh, at, uh, at least over a year ago. 76 weeks ago? <laughs> Is that right? I don't know. It was episode two. We've got 70. This will be 77? 70, 70, 75 or 6. 76. Who Whatever. Cares? Look at a this. long time ago, uh, we had our second episode called What's Stopping You? And it mm-hmm. ended up being... Um, People still talk about it. They still talk about it, man. Yeah. It, it's it's a big deal. Like, like, I'll be streaming, and then people give me updates on what's going on in their life based on what that, for lack of a better phrase, that episode gave them a little kick in the ass, and they ended up making a, a, a really impressive change, and they give me updates on where they stand. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And, Some stories are insane. Oh, like, they're crazy. Career-changing yeah, stuff. Yes, dude. Life-changing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you and I, I remember you and I had an offline discussion where we were like, we have to be careful here. You know what I mean? Because we were just with kinda, great power comes great you're right. responsibility. That's what it kind of came off, man. It's really arrogant, but that's what it felt like. <laughs> but I like it, and and so now we we're, we go by all this time, and we figured let's 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 almost unpack that episode, uh, not that episode, but let's unpack the energy behind what that episode mm-hmm. was, and give it another layer um, that we're going to yeah. talk about, and then also it uses us almost like of a, a hybrid to talk about what have we learned in the last year and, and what are, what do we appreciate about yeah. what it has been going on? So uh, I, I'll tell you right now, the layer we're going to be adding just as anybody, if this is new to anybody, uh, the episode we're talking about is called what's stopping, what's stopping you, you. And it was centered around really three levels of wanting something. And it's either you don't want it or you kind of want it or you really want it. And uh, the first two are, are cousins of each other. It's, you know, uh, the re- you really wanted is when nothing's going to stop you, and that's what that's what it was. What's stopping you? So people made these great changes, but now, uh, over a year has gone by, and I would venture that a lot of people were fired up when they listened to it, and they didn't make any change. So we're talking about what's I'm raising still- my hand. I'd be oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm raising my hand yeah, yeah. Because I remember we talked about like getting back <laughs> in the gym and and losing some of the pandemic weight, and yeah. uh, I th- I'm pr- I, th- I probably still weigh the same thing as I did then, mm-hmm. but. So it would be nice to be like, okay, let's reflect on that. If if I felt at the time that I wanted it, not kind of wanted it, yeah. wanted it, I felt I did, then what happened? Yeah. How come I'm not where I'm supposed to be? Yeah. You're- Why didn't I do what I was supposed to do, Skiz? <laughs> What'd you do that for? <laughs> well, okay, so I don't want we didn't want to dive too much into that, but I will say this. You're like it's just me personally. I I've always thought you put too much emphasis on numbers. I just I just do. And when it comes to you know, because the, the scale doesn't mean you're healthy. It doesn't. Right. I've yeah. seen you make some pretty noticeable changes. I think you know. I I I think I've seen you make some changes in your life for the better from a health standpoint. And doesn't mean that you're perfect or whatever. But yeah. I I've seen you move in the right direction. But um. But we want to talk about another element of this whole thing is procrastination, putting it off. Yeah. Right. A lot of people, it, it took this a year for me to realize that third level of I really want it. That also has its own. You could almost slice that into. And one is I really want it and I'm starting. And the other one's like, for some reason, I don't feel ready yet to pull the trigger. I don't yeah. feel ready yet to get started on whatever it is. And I feel like I am the poster child of what it is to put things off from a micro level and a bigger level. And and we're going to you want to talk about numbers that. like when it comes to putting things off, I I don't like starting something new unless it's a Monday. <laughs> okay. That's, that's about right. So like, yeah. it, like if my wife's like, oh, let's start some, you know, uh, let's start going to the gym every day. I'll be like, okay, on Monday. And she's like, why don't we just go today? i am like, because it's not Monday. We got to, if we're going to do some, make some life change thing, yeah. it has to start at the beginning of the week. Yeah. That way you have the, the whole week, you know, and I get caught up on these things. Yeah. And my wife's right. Like, like we, uh, let's just go. We said we want to go. Let's just go right now. Don't yeah. wait till Monday. Don't wait till January first yep. to start your New Year's revo- resolution. Well, you know? I don't think that you're unusual. This is why talk to anybody who works at a gym. 
right? On January, that first week of every year is mm-hmm. that they can't keep up because it's so overloaded. But the disposition is, yeah. well, I'll give it a couple weeks. And, yeah. and that's what I actually avoided the gym for the past two weeks because, yeah, because of, of that. that. Because, but you but now I'm like, oh, next week. I just spit on the microphone. Next week, everybody will be gone again. Yeah. Because National Quitters Day was just a couple days ago. National Quitters Day. <laughs> yeah. So they, they've pinpointed, like, how many days most people last on their New Year's resolutions to January 12th. Yeah. Okay. So January 12th is the day that, that the average person will give up on whatever they said they were going to do for the whole year. Yep. <laughs> so yep. we're like, okay. Um, Cause we were looking, you know, like the first, first week into January, we're looking, uh, uh, there's an app on our phone that tells us how, how many people are in the gym so that we know whether it's super crowded and we want to deal with that or just go for a walk around the neighborhood instead. Right. And so we've been keeping every, every like night at five 30, that's the time that we usually go to the gym. Mm-hmm. I look at the app and I'm like, Ooh, eight out of 10 bars. There's like, it's 80% full. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I ain't going in. Yeah. Let's just go for a walk around the block. You know, <laughs> that's better than nothing. It's a lot better than nothing. So let's let's talk about when when we procrastinate on something that we know we're ultimately going to end up doing. It could be a a, a change to our own well being. It could be a, a a chore that you got to get to. The bottom line is this: internally, you've committed. This is something I'm going to do. Why are we putting it off? And I I, I got to tell you, I I need the answer to this because like from a I I put things off. I've made a, an art out of it, out of putting things off to where. I will like do something to move in the direction of finalizing what that thing is going to be done. And then I'll put off the rest of the, it makes me crazy. Cause I actually, in, <laughs> at my very core, I'm actually a completionist, but I'm have so much going on that I, I I'm just blowing it over yeah. and over again. And case in point, I, or as you know, I ordered a bunch of, uh, equipment i ordered a bunch of network like yeah really, you were having some packet loss i'm having issues your right stream now. was yeah. dropping out on uh, for lots, people and lots, stuff and yeah. got a lot of to, different issues trying to on. figure it out yeah yeah that's always fun that's it's, a, it's, it's, it's so, because there's so many moving parts yeah. but um uh one of the things was we you know i had some really good collaboration with timmy tech tv and he gave me some good advice on what kind of network equipment to get so i really i threw down i got some really good stuff and when it arrived i'm like man look at that Look at all that equipment. There's so I got this big, beautiful dream machine. I got an access point to. Ah, I'm gonna have to set some set aside some time to get mm-hmm. that installed. That thing sat in the box for over a week, and I'm like, "What? It? I know it's gonna take me a while, but why have I not even got it? Why am I still dealing with this old stuff? Like it's just crazy because yeah. I just didn't want to get it going. I bought that Elgato camera how long ago, and it's still in the <laughs> box. I finally opened the. I bought it like how long ago was that, dude? Uh, six months, six, probably six plus months ago. It's a really nice camera that was out of sale, and I was actually on the East Coast when you texted me. You're like, "Yo, it's it's back in stock," and I ordered it that day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's also it's a pretty expensive webcam. Yeah, it sat in. It's my like closet. the most expensive webcam you could buy. Yeah, I think. <laughs> it's so beautiful, and and I have it in the box, and it sat there for months. And I'm like, "Why? Th- this is actually not a big job. Just do it." No, it's a USB. It's a USB. You just plug it in. <laughs> It's well, plug and play. Well, hold on. There's configuration. There's green screen. There's chroma key and stuff like that. I gotta, you know, redo sure. all that. But that's Five not, minutes. It's not a big job. It's not a big no. job. I get it. Uh, but I was like, what? What is it that's holding me back? And we're really now. I'm not making excuses, dude. I'm just gonna tell you what it is. Is that typically when I end up streaming, uh, legitimately less than ten minutes prior to that stream, I was busy since the moment I got up, and that's just every single day for me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if I just postpone the stream twenty minutes, I can install this thing. Why yeah. don't I do it? Because I'm just more excited about getting on with my life and just doing the fun stuff. And my brain does the good enough. This camera, I'm yeah, using you're is good you're enough. also kind of a if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Type I of am person, the very opposite. You are the exact opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Like I, I, I can, I can probably you can't even count on on one hand how many changes I've made just to our our setup in yeah. here since the last time we've recorded. In I here. know. You know. What I, I mean? know. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's but that's a very good. That's a very good thing. You know, I'm a, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You're a, I don't need any signs of breakage for me to replace it. You know what right. I mean? Like, cause I think that you, uh, you thrive on that. I think the endorphins get going with new stuff. Yeah, like, I like, like playing with tech. You like playing with tech, but you know that feeling everybody gets when they peel the plastic off a new cell phone, whatever that feel like that feeling is like, that's yeah. If you could bottle that and inject it in your veins, you would, you like new stuff so that you're right. We're very different in that respect, but I would, 
I would say I was about to say I, I think I'd rather be your way, but I I don't know if I want to go all the way. It's very time there. consuming <laughs> yeah. and, and costly. It, costly, yeah. Uh, I switched again my audio mixer. What? Let's just look at the desk. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I and, and like every other week I just switch it. Why? I just switch it. Why do you keep doing that? Constantly looking for that edge, man. That edge. Oh, this this audio processor is better than that other audio press. Uh, you know, so processor. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little lesson here. And Neil Pert, you know, who uh, Neil Pert is, God rest him. He passed away mm-hmm. not, not a terrible, long, terribly long time ago. But he was the drummer of Rush, and he was one of the one of the greatest drummers ever. Uh, he's a fantastic drummer. We know if you know Neil Pert, you know Neil Pert. This is who we as kids we studied him. Um, he did it. He was the, he was one of the best. He was I, I wouldn't say he was the best in the world ever. I, I think he was easily one of the best, and especially mm-hmm. in his genre. Well, he decided to remake himself. Yeah, you're talking about the the, the circular, circular motion. motion drumming. Yeah, yeah. And he disappeared. I think we talked. We may have talked about this on a podcast. Yeah. I don't know. Or he reinvented. He he went and he reinvented himself, and he worked with these. He went to. Uh, he just like I don't remember. He went to some sort of I don't know where he went. He traveled and he found this new thing where instead of an up and down motion with the drums, they there was a new uh, approach in regards to every motion was a circle because it 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 just sort of kept this more fluid tempo and more consistent. Which, for the record, consistency was not something Neil Peart needed help in. But he just did this and he reinvent. I mean, how do you get that good and then reinvent the way you're drumming? He changed everything. And I, and what's funny is I remember going to a concert. I was in the second row in front, like front and center second row uh and it was shortly after this chapter i remember being like he's drumming weird like i remember watching like <laughs> he's drumming weird but he does a circular thing anyway he goes away he masters it he comes back because he wanted that edge mm-hmm. and uh and he's meeting with his bandmates and life's in and getty lee are like you know let's let's jam so they jam and he's done he's like what do you think they're like of what he's like what'd you think of my new drumming and they're like <laughs> What are you talking about? He's all, we tell him I'm doing all different, man. It's like circles now. And they're like, it sounds the same to us. <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? So he wanted yeah. that edge. He reinvented it. It's like, yeah. I remember that, that story reminds me of you. Like, he reinvented yeah. for nothing. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I do something in, in the sake of progress that actually is, is a back step. Like, and, and we've done it, it we've had be. it in the podcast as well, yeah. where it's like, oh, new camera. And then, it, and then we, don't get the lighting figured out or whatever, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, like it happens, and it did happen. I actually did that. I was like, I was, I was, I was analyzing like a lot of the shows I was watching and 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 cinematics and stuff. And I'm like, man, every time they show somebody, they they shine the brighter light on the back side of their face, yeah, from where the camera's f- facing them, right? So now the the front side of the face that the camera's focused on is a little darker, and the back side's lit up. That's weird. That's not the way. I have ever done it. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's try that. Yeah. And so I did that. I flipped my my um, spotlight or my key light and my fill light so that I would have like a more shadowy face facing the camera. And I did one string. And I was like, new uh, new lighting, what do you guys think? And a lot of people were like, yeah, it looks good because they could tell I was excited about the change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then I get done with the stream and I decide I'm going to take yesterday's stream before I made the flip. Uh, compared to today's stream where I flipped it, put them side by side, and I looked at them like, oh, new lighting was complete garbage. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. was a terrible idea, and I showed my wife, too, and she's like, yeah. And, and so I, I came back, and I flipped it back around, and, and I showed her another picture after that, and she's like, yeah, don't touch it ever again. Yeah, your lighting's well, that, perfectly fine. So like, do, just please don't. Please stop. Yeah. Just stop. But that, but that's part of the, <laughs> But that's part of the learning process, yeah. right? And so what's, what's interesting is that I actually am – a person who who pulls triggers, but it takes some sort of weird, like I, I guess when when there's something not happening, I think you nailed me. When there's something not happening and and nothing and and something needs to change, I'm the guy that's like pull the trigger and and I'll fire and then I'll aim, right? Mm-hmm. But when something's already good enough or uh, it's not broke, like you said, I'm like just it's fine. We have other bigger things to worry about. You are different to where when it comes to going down that journey of. Of of evolving and changing and getting that edge or whatever, uh, you you're you're the messiah of what it is to just say just go for it. I did, nothing's broken. We can move forward. Let's just go for it. Let's make it. Let's be better. Let's do this. And you just pull the trigger. So I want you to, to dig into that and talk to the people and and the person the people you're aiming at are the people that heard our podcast from those many episodes ago of what's stopping you. 
were inspired and, and you're listening to me, you know who you are and you were inspired and you were just, you were gung ho and you were going to make the change. And then you didn't. And, and I, I have a feeling I w- would have had the capacity to really be one of those people. And we've all exercised that we can be that person, but mm-hmm. Since you know impulse on what it is to identify something that you want to be better and then just going for it, even though nothing's broken, what are you tapping into? What are you doing? Because I, I could use some of that myself. Oh, um, you know, I, I think it's it's something I get excited about. You know what I mean? Like you got to you got to innately be excited about what it is you want, mm-hmm. you know, and what excites me is is the idea, the concept of perfection Mm -hmm. not that it's achievable but the concept of perfection and and just being better every day you know whether it's technology and the and the way i produce things or self uh betterment you know Mm -hmm. uh i find great joy in trying in striving for progress striving for making the next step and that just it fuels me that's that's my fuel for wanting to make changes all the time and, and try new things. And, and, you know, like, what was it? Thomas Edison that said when he was trying to make the light bulb, he, he, he didn't fail a hundred times. He, he discovered, he discovered a hundred ways not to do it. Right. You learn from, from everything you try to do. So nothing ever really felt like a failure, even though I just talked about the lightning. No, but that's a good way to look at it. So I get excited about that. I'm, I'm, I'm a learner. Innately, we've talked you about are. strengths, right? Yep. So anytime I'm doing these things or or buying new gear and I'm learning about it, right? Like mm-hmm. like got new lighting equipment. Now I want to learn about how to control the lights through a DMX controller and this whole. It's basically like I'm going to become a lighting engineer for a concert by the end of this. You know yeah. what I mean? That excites me. It's a new technology I'd never heard of, and now I'm thinking. Now my brain gets going. Okay, what can I do with that? That's different. I could basically put on a lighting show on stream if mm-hmm. I wanted to, you know, and that kind of stuff excites me. And then that drives me to actually go all in yeah. and and uh, and get kind of neurotic about it and get like hyper focused on that thing to the point to, to where and we talked about this in the initial uh, uh, podcast that uh, what's stopping you that it can get annoying yeah. when you get hyper focused and people outside your hyper focused world don't give a crap. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You can become annoyed. Uh, and that's me. I get that way. You know, I just, I, I'm driven by the concept of making things better. You know, you're massively driven yeah. by the concept of making things better. That is, that is not a, I don't think that's a bad trade. I can understand how it can have its own detriment, but I think that's a really good way to be. And it was, and I don't necessarily, I, I am too, but it's on a different level. It's on a different level. I don't know why I, like okay here we go my equipment i have good equipment at home right i'm not interested in like the bells and whistles and and making my uh like my my stream layout look a whole lot better or making the technology a little bit smoother like when it's a when it's problematic and it's disrupting my stream yeah that's different that's why i bought all the stuff i bought um but but when it's working then i i am like you i am focused on on me I, like, you know what I mean? So, like, instead of buying new stuff, I am focused on what can I do to make my craft better? What well, that's can... that's the true thing is is that's way more important than what I'm doing. I could have, I... I could have the best camera, the best lighting, the best computer, the best you name it, microphone, everything. And if I myself am not making people laugh or producing entertaining content with my personality and the things I'm doing as a human... None of that matters. And you're just finding the, the best way matters. to deliver a polished turd is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is what you're not. So I'm very clear. You're you're very good. But <laughs> okay, thanks. But but <laughs> but I understand what you're saying. But at the same time, I, I think that so I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Let's let me just get there. Here's something I've been procrastinating on big time. And this here's something I've been wanting to do because I I feel like it would be better for me. This office is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's ab- I mean, and you put the work in. This didn't happen overnight. Oh. You know what I mean? I know that your wife's got the eye. I get that, but this was not like this some easy task. This or wall alone took us two days. Yeah, of working I mean? all day, and it's it, it was not it's not perfect, but like yes, it each, is. Each each little brick <laughs> had to be cut and glued to the wall yeah, individually. This is good. This is good. We're let's dive into this. Okay, so we're going to cut to the center. 
So we're talking, and we've talked about this before, but this is not some sort of big like uh, layer of thing you just kind of put up in one one go. Each one of these yeah. is individual. individual. Now, if you're listening online, what we're looking at here, it looks it looks like bricks behind us, right? Uh, this is sound soak. Each one of these is. Indi- Did you guys physically cut these? A lot of them, yeah. So this, a lot of them we are, had to cut. Each one of these is individual, so it gives us incredible brick looking texture, but it's all sound soak. Uh, the and it, it's perfectly fit with these uh, shelves that have this lighting. There's my blue. <laughs> there's your yellow. Like this is like the whole thing is crafted so unbelievably gorgeously that what my bra- my brain does, my brain does two things. I want something that is this professional behind me. One and two, never gonna happen. Don't have the time. But do I want it or not? Do mm. I want it or not? Because what it's gonna take for me to do something like this is to disappear. Uh, for a while, because I since I, I work constantly, people online, I love to stream every day. I don't want to miss a day. I don't want to do it. Yeah. What they're going to see is they're going to see Skiz disappear for possibly two weeks because it will take me that long to actually tear down the office and do everything. I actually tore my office up the other day. Yeah, but I heard I heard the, the story about oh, that. It's a nightmare. You told your stream you spent basically you spent half the day tearing it down and then the other half putting it right back the way it was. Yep. That's right. So you basically just lost a day. I lost a with day. With no progress. All I did was build a That's table. That's got to be the most frustrating thing ever. Oh, it was terrible. It was, ever. I, I, I was upset for a long, because I, I did it. I was like, if I want, I'm just going to give up a day and do mm-hmm. this. And and it was like, and I tore everything down just to bring it all back to status quo. And it's a long, boring story from like a technical standpoint. There were cables that were uh, not getting the job done. I'm not going to The only mistake that. you made, really... Was not, was not calling I me. I see. I think about it all because the, every cable, you don't every screw, <laughs> right. everything you needed that day, <laughs> I have in that closet behind you. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to bug you. I don't bug you. I should have thought of that, but um, I don't. I just it was one of the things, and that's the other thing, right? Is that like you? I I'm I'm really good at this stuff. You're elite at this stuff. So if I get with you, it's going to go quicker for me. It's not lost to me that you're busy too. So yeah. it's like one of those things where it's like I'd like to be a little bit more independent when it comes to this type of thing. Yeah. So that's why. I do no. It. Yeah. You've you've always been that way too. Like like when we've had computer problems and stuff, like you will troubleshoot them for hours on end before you're like, dude, I give up. Yeah, I, I need uh, your help. Yeah. yeah. And that there's another podcast episode. Yeah. <laughs> help cries for help. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We covered that <laughs> too. There's nothing we can't talk about anymore that we haven't already covered. No, it feels we got like. we got tons more. <laughs> but uh, but but my point being that what I did instead is I just I'm like I'm just gonna I'm just, just leave the green screen up. Just leave it up. That's all I did. Just leave the green screen. But I, I, I had to build a big table. So now I, and I actually needed room for the dream machine and all that, which is the, the router. Um, I had to, so I did move my office around a little bit, but in regards to, I just tore everything up. You think now is the time to rip the green screen down and let's get started on a nice background. Yeah. Uh, I don't, it's not going to work. I mean, I'm going to lose another couple weeks. Like it's just not going to happen. I got to order the stuff. I got to get it. You know, I got to get organized and all that stuff. So anyways, my point being this. I want this. I I I I I don't have it because what I do have is working. So the only way something like this is going to happen is if for some reason, like whatever I have stopped working and it's not going to work and I can't move on unless I have this. That's the difference mm. between the two of us. As long as I can stay keep my my head above water, I don't care how much of my body is submerged. You want to be paddle boarding. You want to be above the water all the way, and that's yeah. great. I just need oxygen. And so that's how I, I operate, and I'm, I'm not into yacht. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the paddle board would get. Yeah, yeah. Not, that's, no. that's the first day, and then I buy a, a fishing boat, yep. and then I buy a speedboat, and, and, and I buy a yacht. And yeah. then. You have to, made some and then you have to own the oceans, and then you're going to be in space. And well, I got to find my own uh, private island. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just I'm just doggy paddling. And you're just happy that your head's <laughs> above the water. But yeah. I mean, there is another. See, there's another another hang up that you just had. You said, "Oh, I should just tear down the green screen, and then I'll be gone for two weeks." There's another option there. You tear down the green screen. And you do a stream with no green screen yeah. and whatever ugly wall behind yep. you. And now Let it drive you me. have the motivation yeah. because you're like, I don't want my stream to ever look this bad again. Yeah. You just forced your hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there yeah. are maybe some catalysts that you can induce into starting something that you're afraid to start. Yeah, you're right. I told you the story about my uncle who wanted to put in the fire pit waterfall in his pool and he just decided Scattered. to take a pick and smash the cool deck. I'm like, what? And I can identify. I really can identify. I do that a lot, but there's certain things I'm like, no, good enough is good enough. 
And I think I'm just, I think I'm in a place to where there's just not a lot of time to, I don't want to make excuses. It's not, I'm not doing it. I'm not what if I excuses. start nitpicking? That'll feel good. Okay. What do you mean? I'll do one. I'll just do one. Oh, I'll do one. So I watch a lot of your streams. Oh, God. In fact, my Twitch my Twitch summary of last year says you were my most watched streamer. So. Heyo. Heyo. Uh, and I did notice you have a very cool coffee mug with Kevin Bubbles, Malone, Refrigerator, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Matt, Matt I do. Do. <gasps> Nailed it. You did nail it. And you like to show it to your audience. You like, to hold the, it up to your, you like to hold it up to your. You like to hold up your camera. Yeah. Your webcam has a built-in ring light, yeah. which means when you hold your cam, your, your your mug up, <laughs> they can't actually see it because well, the ring like... light washes the whole thing out. Okay, not all of it. I do a so, like this. So. There's your motivation a little bit, right? You want to. You're so proud of your Kevin yeah. Bubbles Malone cup uh, that you want people to see it, but they can't see it because you got a camera yeah. that's ruining it. So now you have to change to your Elgato Face Cam Pro that does not have the built-in ring light, and then you might have to also deal with some new lighting. But yeah, there you go. Uh, that's a good one, dude. And I want to tell you, I did try to hook up the new camera. This is <laughs> this is what ended up setting me back because I wanted to. I have a couple things going on where I don't want the camera facing directly at me anymore. I do like the angle thing, but I can't do the angle thing because I got a window behind me, so I can't. It's not gonna, my my room's weird, right? I have like mm -hmm. windows in these weird angles. Anyways, long story short, I'm like, I'm just going to do it anyways. I'll figure that out later. I'll put a blackout screen on it. But I, I have one USB-C port on my computer, and it happens to be a dud. It happens to not work, and that camera takes USB-C. Yeah. So I don't have a USB-C to USB-A. We're getting so boring now. I didn't have a right cable, so I ordered it. It came in like five days ago. Why have I not oh, done it? Oh, so you it? have the cable. Yes. I have it now. I'll do it. Good luck. I hope it works. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think it will? I don't know. Am I? You don't that know. camera's real, real picky about the USB that it uses. So maybe use, it's got to be USB C. Could be. Anyway. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Anyways, Lot, anyways. Most people listening don't care about uh, I, that's this why I'm moving on. Technology. But, yeah, stuff. I know. But but the premise being that like when we want something and we end up putting it off, we know we want it and we end up putting it off. What is that? Why have we convinced ourselves that this thing that we want to make happen, uh, we're either not ready for it or we don't deserve it yet? Um, or that if we start now, it's just going to ultimately turn into a failure to launch. Why do we do these things, and what can we do to to overcome them? Yeah. And I think a big part of it is finding a way to enjoy the journey. That's what you let me let's be very clear here. You always you like to enjoy the journey, the tech stuff. You enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You enjoy. That's why you're the plastic off the cell phone. You like the process of buying stuff and and then and trying it out and then buying more stuff and trying that out and advance enhancing this and all that. You like that journey. Most people don't like the fitness journey. Most people don't. Some people do. I envy the people that love being in the gym and love yeah. working out, right? I've had stints in my life where I loved it or whatever, but those people, I think a lot of people end up failing because they're like, I want this, but they want the top of the mountain. You have to find a way to 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 love the journey. I think that that's, I think that's. You're not going to force yourself to love being on the stair machine. You know what I mean? Like but, if you just innately don't, but there are tricks. Like I, I, I don't know who I heard this from, but recently I heard um, kind of like a fitness expert say, you know, if if you're trying to like get back into fitness, like, you know, new year, new year, new you just happened. Right. And so there's a lot of people that are trying to dip their toes in the fitness pool again. And a lot of people will, like I said, fail within 12 days. But they said the key is to find something, a way to exercise that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. So find something, you know, what I mean, like I remember basketball. We would play basketball oh on gosh. our breaks at, at work. It's the best. And we would get a great workout. I was sweating like crazy, huffing and puffing. And but none of that mattered. I was getting the exercise. I wasn't even thinking about it because I was having fun yes. playing a game. Yes, dude. Right? So if you can find a way to twist the things that you kind of don't want to do into something that you actually somehow enjoy, yeah. then it's gonna be a lot easier Kay. to I, pull the trigger. I got one for you. You ready? I'm gonna do it. Okay. Something for you and I to do. Okay. You're going to you love it. play pickleball. Yes! I knew it. Yes! I knew it. How did you know I'd say pickleball? Uh, well, a couple things. One, pickleball is currently the uh, fastest growing <laughs> sport in the United States. And two, uh, you told me a story about you and your family buying a pickleball set a couple yeah. weeks ago. So yeah. I kind of well, we bought... put the dots together <laughs> okay, there. It wasn't, it wasn't rocket science. I got other stuff, too. <laughs> but anyways, you're, we're going to play pickleball. You're gonna, and okay. I got all, this, all the stuff, and I know yeah, all the pickleball rules. court that not too far from we're, us. That's right. That's where we play. Yeah. And it's super fun, man. Yeah. And, and 
when my daughter and I would go, I'd always bring the basketball because there's a basketball court right there. So in case the pickleball court was occupied, then we would just shoot, shoot around. Some hoops. Yeah, yeah. So this is a good idea. And in case the basketball court's occupied, you can swing on the swings. You can swing on the swings, which I did that, dude. Did I, you try sitting on one of those swings? I did. You have no idea. I was like, this these, these chains are gonna snap. Dude. And my daughter's like, the chains are not, you're not gonna break like metal. Up, they're tight up your sides, and you're like, how does anybody enjoy this? Like these chains are literally <laughs> rubbing up my armpits and stuff. God. Like <laughs> I, I think I said it was further back. So video. uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay, so you've got on the swings too. That's good. So let's let's we're gonna play some pickleball. I like right this, we're doing this. I, 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 and ready? In the spirit of the show, if we don't do it. Then it's on me. Okay. I will schedule this. We will do this. And yeah. it's going to be fun. You're going to love Let's it. Let's do dude. it. It's so much fun. And I know, <laughs> hey, well, really quick sidebar, funny story. I had never played pickleball in my life. And um, my daughter was the only one that had. And so we, we bought the pickleball set. And uh, I said, so how do you, like, what, what are the rules? And she goes, Dad, I have played once. I played one time, and it's actually really complicated. There's a lot of rules. And I'm like, really? I expected it to not be that complicated. And so I was really kind of shocked. I'm like, I, yeah. I thought this would be kind of simple. She's like, no, there's a lot of rules. I don't remember. There's something about the kitchen. I don't know. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead. And... Something about the kitchen. Yeah, there's a, there's a thing called the kitchen. There's, a, there's no kitchen. It's outdoors. <laughs> there's a kitchen. There's a kitchen in it. Anyways, I look up a YouTube video, and I'm like, well, let's watch this video together. So I hit play, and here's how the video starts. Pickleball is one of the fastest growing recreational sports in the world, Told whatever, you. and 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 this and this lady says probably because it's so easy to understand. <laughs> Dude, we started rolling, and sure enough, it, it's got like a handful of rules. It's super easy um, to know the rules, but if you really get involved, like it's it's called like uh, tennis for old people. So we're officially right. old people. But if you really get involved, and and you you can work up a sweat in that game if you really get it done. And we got to a point to where we were playing and having a lot of fun. And then I was I was playing my wife and just trying to volley around and we were having a good one. And then I'd like the ball came to me and, and I just cut this bottom spin on it. So it like put this like and it just professional. Oh, dude. And it hits the ground, does one of those. And and my wife's like, what is that? You know what I mean? And my daughter starts laughing. She's like, yeah, he does that sometimes. And my wife's like all like like upset, not real upset, but upset. I'm like, I'm sorry. I won't I won't put any more spin on. She's like, seriously. We're having, trying to have a fun game here. You're putting spit on the ball. Yeah. Like, it was really a funny moment. <laughs> that throat, jeez. But, but, well, it was like, because, like, she, like, she's spiking it at her face. <laughs> it's a turn there. Just talking Bloody trash. Bloody nose. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Missing teeth. Chucking my little racket at her. Um, no, no, she, it was just, like, just volleying around is, is a lot of fun. And I, and when you and I play, we are going to be trying to beat the other person. Yeah. That's what's going to be happening. And yeah. it's going to be fun. We dude. get competitive. We do. And, but yeah. it's going to be, but here's the deal though. I'm, I'm going to be trying to beat you. I'm going to try to beat you. But the thing is, I genuinely believe for some reason, probably because it's got the word pickle in it. But if I end up <laughs> losing, I'm not going to be all that distraught about it. You know what I mean? I think the, I think the name of the game I is going like to help pickles, me out. So I don't like pickles. So you got pickles. an advantage right there. <laughs> dude, it's like two ADD people having a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what was the subject anyway? Um, <laughs> Dude, that was amazing. So, okay, I own it, and you're we're gonna, gonna play pickleball. You're gonna own that. I got the whole and, set, and you you don't just kind of want to play pickleball. No, you really want to play pickleball. Well, I really, and I and I, and I I like the idea of getting some exercise that, where it doesn't feel like you're that you're, like you're sacrificing. That's what and I it's want. Hard. Do you remember when yeah. you and I would go to the gym and just go to the basketball court and just shoot around for an hour? Yeah, and we and we didn't just shoot like loose. We created games that created cardio. By the mm -hmm. end of it, I was like like drenched in sweat and I don't remember working out. That's what I want to capture. That's yeah. that right there is what I really want. Yeah. And I want to hang out with my buddy. And so like like this is the this is the perfect thing. So I think I think like if we want to tie this back to, you know, because it's like what's still stopping you, right? Yeah. Like like you thought you wanted it, but you still didn't pull the trigger. You know, I've had a lot of those since that that podcast. And I've I've had to like replay that podcast to try to get get that emotion back. Yeah. Like get that spirit back that I want to really go do it and then maybe do one day and, and then that's it. So why why does why does that happen? What are some things that we can do to uh, get past that? You know, get past pulling the trigger, and then once we get started, I do think there's a lot in that statement about can you make it fun? If yeah. you can make 
whatever it is you want to do enjoyable enjoyable is the word then yeah. you're not going to feel like this is hard it's a sacrifice you're not going to wake up uh, dreading, dreading it, the concept yes. of getting after it whatever yeah. it is um you're going to just you're just want to do it you're going to you just like the same reason I want to play with technology you know because I enjoy it the same reason yeah. why we will get a good exercise and have fun playing pickleball and will probably become yep. a, a weekly thing or whatever that we look forward to yep. and it's exercise and and I think it. I think it's I think it's two parts I think it's that find a way to make it enjoyable and I also think that a lot of the people who were like yo no I, I definitely want this I'm definitely going to do this I'm going to make this change um I'm willing to bet that there was still a, a, a healthy degree of, but I, I I still need it to be easy. You know what I mean? Like I want, I definitely want this change. I'm willing to make this change, but I still need it to be easy. I think that with this, without consciously thinking that, I still think that they were looking for the planets to align to make this new change that they desired um, to just sort of present itself. You know yeah. what I mean? Like some people who wanted a career change. I do. I really want a career change. I'm so I'm so looking forward to the day somebody knocks on my door and says, "Hey, do you want a new job?" That's right. <laughs> yeah, but no, that, that happens. That's exactly right. <laughs> that doesn't happen. So uh, I still think that there was a really good degree of I still I want to I do want the change. I'm willing to put in the work, but I need it. I need it to be kind of easy. I need it to present itself. Yeah. That's just not a reality. And 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 sometimes when the bigger things that you want, it's it's. I don't want to get away from that needs you need to make the journey fun because I agree with that or make it enjoyable. I 100% subscribe to that. Find a way to make it enjoyable, but find also a way to be cool with the fact that it might not be entirely enjoyable. And if you want yeah. what's at the end of this, you, you're going to have to get uncomfortable. There's still going to be sacrifices. Yes. You dude. know, um, even us talking about playing pickleball, that means we're sacrificing whatever time That's we right. need to put aside. Yep. And those, then that time is probably going into something else right now that. We will need to either figure out how to fit in elsewhere or or forgo something. Yep. You know, something's got to come off the plate because you and I both have very full plates. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is something we can talk about more later. Um, but, yeah, there's going to be some sacrifice. Not everything's going to be easy. I, I think, you know, we talked about this, too, on the first time we, we did the What's Stopping You is, is people get comfortable being comfortable. And then when you start forcing yourself into a space that's not comfortable, you're going to shy away from it. Yeah. You know, it, it, unless you're a masochist, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yes, like, yeah. Uh, you're going to shy away from it. And so uh, I, I think there's another piece to it, too. A lot of people will make things bigger than they really are, mm. you know, like, mm. OK, uh, I'm going to get after this. I'm going to I'm going to get in shape or whatever. Uh, we'll just use that as an example. doesn't really matter what. But they, they think, OK, well, in order to do that, I have to go to the gym every day for an hour every day. And do this, 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 and this, right? I got to do these full body workouts or whatever. And then it becomes like this big undertaking in their head and going into the gym day one. Yeah, it definitely would be. Instead of just thinking, I'm just going to put my, my shoes on today. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to walk in the door. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to force myself to work out. I'm just going to walk in the door. Okay. I'm going to stay for at least five minutes. And then, you know what I mean? Like baby step their way into it so that it's not this like big thing in their head that that is going to ultimately stop you from it's going to be failure to launch yeah. because you're like, wow, that's going to be too much. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Just do the first thing. Just take down the green screen. Do the yeah. first thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then and then just let it go from there because you'll start to get the drive. You're right. Because I'm too comfortable. Surely. I can just leave up the green screen. Yeah. And just superimpose my body onto the whatever game I'm playing, and that's good enough. Is it? Yeah, it, yes, it is. But it's becoming not good enough for me because every time I tune into one of your streams, I'm like, yeah, that that's what a professional looks like. It's that depth. It's that separation. It's the texture. It's the fact that the background has, like, a direct resemblance of what you're here to do. Like, it's very well thought out. And, 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 and be keen of this, too. Stop. This is direct advice to everybody listening. Stop finding reasons why you can't have it. That's going to be. Yeah. That's going to be on the thumbnail. <laughs> Stop finding reasons why you can't have it. This is something I'm guilty of, man. Yeah. So I'm like, OK, well, here's what I want to do. I do want to change from the dead on look to a side look. Oh, but I can't because I got a window back there. OK, I guess I'm back to death. Why did that stop me? Hold on, pump the brakes for a second. Maybe put 
don't you put some blackout curtains on it? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. find a way to make it work. Turn the desk a little bit. Do something. Yeah, do, yeah. do what you got to do. Like, f- stop finding reasons why you can't get started. It's so easy to come up with excuses, oh. especially when it's something you know is going to be uncomfortable or, or that you don't really want. You know what I yeah. mean? It, it, like, you okay. The, you don't want the work. You just want the end of it. Let me, give you, let me give you the latest example of this from my life. Um, we made a, a bit of a goal, New Year's resolution. Uh, we have basically an ice bath in our in our backyard mm-hmm. uh, in our, on our patio it's called the plunge and it it keeps the water at a very cold temperature all the time it's got like a uh, what are they called the the water thing whatever the pump that, that goes through it's like an air conditioner for water yeah. right it, i'm not smart pump. i'm not smart that's why we do this podcast uh, so it keeps the water cold so you don't have to go buy ice bags and dump them in every time you want to take an ice bath sure. it's just always cold yeah. and uh, we keep it at like 55 degrees fahrenheit so not like crazy cold but cold 55 degrees is pretty cold yes it is uh and so our goal was to do every single day we were going to get in the plunge for at least five minutes each every day for at least january okay and we were killing it first week first week in a few days every day we're nailing it getting in it's not fun dude like you get in that thing and it it's not fun for the first 30 seconds. Yeah. It's not fun ever, but it's not. Miserable. The first 30 seconds are really miserable, um, but there is a lot of advantages that, that there is to it. Um, people can research on their own what that is. But um, so then what happened was, because it is outside on our patio, what happened was the weather changed here. And the last week or so, it's actually been cold mm-hmm. in Arizona, which is, you know, in, in this area of Arizona, it's, it's not usual. Like yeah. it was unusually cold. And so... We would go, it was time to go out and plunge, and we look at each other like, you do realize, like, the temperature outside is actually colder than the water, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go outside in our bathing suit, get in cold water, and then dry off in the freezing cold temperatures, and it just sounded, like, extra miserable. Yeah. And, And that's when it stopped. We stopped. We haven't done it since. It's still cold, so they still have an excuse. <sighs> but it was just it was that, that one excuse that it just got a little bit harder yeah. to do this. You know what I mean? And now you guys are at risk to where when it's nice out, it's you're, you're not gonna it's gonna be, be it's it. gonna be hard to get back in. Yeah. Because we took the first step. Taking yeah. the first step is always the hardest part. Mm-hmm. Just getting the momentum building, right? You, <laughs> we were talking about that with the B doves with the robo. Oh yeah. It's the same thing with a lot of the, a lot of like habit building stuff. Mm-hmm. You got to get in into motion. You got to get the you start building the habit, and then if you if you fail or if you miss your goal, then you need to like jump back in right away. Like it's okay to miss once, but if you miss twice, now you form in a new habit of missing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what's happened. So now we've got a, a habit of not doing it again. And it's going to be very hard to get back into the habit of, okay, let's jump back on. Plus, we had that whole New Year motivation. You yeah, know? yeah I, well, I noticed like, you rolled your eyes when you said New Year's resolution. Like, you actually rolled your eyes as you said it because it was— Yeah, yeah, uh, because it is, it's become like a very cliche sure. thing. Yeah. And, and and I I still do them, though. I still get into it, you know. Well, but there's, the, our, there's our le- if, less than 12-day fail on that. The, what if the New Year doesn't start on a Monday? What? <laughs> Dude, I was stoked. When I found out that January 1st was a Monday <laughs> this year, I was that. like, this is the perfect storm. <laughs> Nothing's stopping me now. <laughs> and here we are. Oh, my yeah. God. That's yeah, and here we are. Here we are. But then again, it, it was it was just that. Exactly what we're talking about. It, was, it just took one little, yeah. you know, and, and the same thing, like, with a lot of other habits, you know. Okay, here's my schedule. I, you know I love my schedule. I've got my schedule. I'm sticking to it. And then, boom, one little thing comes up. Oh, my mom and dad want to go to lunch today. But that's not on my schedule. That's going to throw my whole entire life off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, forget it. All right, schedule's out the window. I can't do schedules anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like obviously, schedules don't work. If it gets, See, I get a wrench thrown yeah. in every once in a while. You know, well, okay, it's so easy to do that. You got to not be derailed by things like that, right? We may have talked about this in the original one. Is that you cannot use a hundred percent consistent. You can strive for a hundred percent consistency in whatever new pattern or lifestyle you're trying to lean into. You cannot allow one hundred percent consistency to be your barometer as to whether or not you're being successful. Mm-hmm. So that here's a case in point. So I run a lot of programs at work and we do what's called pilots where we're trying a new technology or new something for the first time. And when uh, the person I'm working with, they create like a success criteria document 
they'll I always go through it and I modify it and they'll say, uh, you know, we run a two week pilot. We need to have 100 um, percent availability of this or that. And I'm like, yeah, we're, that's going to we're going to fail it back to about 95 percent. They're like, what? I'm like, we'll probably hit 100 percent. We're not going to say 100 percent because there's so many things out of our control that this is a pilot. So what you're telling me is that if we have 99% availability, you're going to scrap all this and return all the equipment and we're not going to move forward? <laughs> is that what you're saying? And they're like, no, that's actually a good point. I'm like, so we're going to dial it back. And so I dial it back to a more realistic number. Nine times out of 10, we hit 100%, mm-hmm. but we can't do it that way because that one out of 10 time was something that we hit like 95% and we it was still a success and that thing went on to live on and make the company better. So, so the, the point being that so many people are like, this is what I'm going to do. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, at this time, I'm going to do this, and they do it. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday. Something came up Wednesday. They don't do it Friday. They don't do it Monday. They don't do it Wednesday. And next thing you know, they fail off the rails. Because 100% consistency was their barometer as to whether or not they're actually successful. That is direct advice. Get away from that line of thinking. Strive for it. Get away from that line of thinking. You have to get back on. I I, I have gotten a lot better. Yeah, and yeah. I joked about it. No, uh, but you have. But I have gotten a lot better about not being an all or nothing person. Yeah. Because that's the way it was with a lot of the things I was trying to do. If 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 I couldn't hit it perfectly, I just completely got off whatever wagon I was on that week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and so you know you learn. And I think um, James Clear uh, it was the uh, the author of. Um, uh, habits. It's a habit book. I forgot the, the exact. Oh, Atomic Habits. Uh, he said, never miss more than once. That's his advice. Mm. Never miss more than once. It's okay to miss. Like you said, it's, impo- it's, it's almost impossible to be perfect. You know, stuff happens. Life happens. But try do your best to never miss more than once. And that's what it was. Like, in okay. a row. You're saying, yeah, in yeah. a row. So mo- Wednesday, came, something came up. And then you said, then you miss Friday. Well, don't miss Friday. Exactly, exactly. You just realize, okay, yeah. Wednesday something happened. Yeah, that's not, okay. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Never miss more than once. Go on, go on Friday. Get right back on. And then if you miss on Monday again, go back on Wednesday. Yeah, just, you know what I mean. Yeah. At least you're still trying. You know. Uh, so I guess that's that was a nice piece of advice. For, well, I thought from on. James. You're not still trying. You're still doing. You right. understand? Like that's a very you that's have to good, be that's very a good switch of that yeah, word, yeah. Think about that about that. You're no longer you're not still at least you're still trying. No, you're actually still doing. If you miss one and you come back on Friday, you're you're still in it. You're still I you ready for this? You're still 100% in. You're 100 yeah, you missed one. You're still 100% in. But but some life gets in the way. We get that. But you're actually still doing that. That's that uh super profound what you just said when you switched trying with doing. Yeah. Right? Um there was another story I heard and I think it was also from James Clear was uh, the difference in perception or, or perspective of like um, smokers, right? Mm. So it, there was a, a person that uh, they were at a party or whatever, and somebody's like, "Hey, do you want to do you want a cigarette?" And and they said, "No, thanks. I'm trying to quit." Mm. Right? In their mind, they are still a smoker That's right. who's trying to quit. Yeah. Person B <clears throat> offered the cigarette, said, "No, thanks. I don't smoke." And that was a person who had quit smoking mm. not long ago, right? Yeah. So they have already, in just in their mind, changed from I'm trying, which is easy to be fallible on. Yeah. Right? You're allowed to fail now. Yeah. It's just something you're just I'm trying, trying out. Yeah. To, no, I'm not a smoker anymore. Yeah. And that's that's where, like, you are you have to kind of switch that in your head. And that's exactly what you just did Yeah. with that. And, and so I think that's super powerful to, to be like... I'm trying this new habit to no, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I. If if you do it once, you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but and, but it, that's but it, it actually works in the other direction too. You're right. If you do it once, you're still doing it, but you can still get back or you and try it. to get away from it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you did, did it. it. Yeah. You're not doing it. No, but this is good. So so I, ah, this is. I don't want to get too um, specific, but I almost want to target specifically people who are listening who are smokers and they desperately want to quit. Like, like, like I want to, I want to lean into that. If we can get one person to quit smoking, like, and I'm not trying to be like this complete fascist on smoking. I'm not saying that if smoke bad person, that's not, I'm not saying that. It, I'm, what I am saying is that I can unequivocally tell you that I smoked for a long time when I was a kid. And then obviously now I haven't smoked in a very long time. I'm no longer a smoker and haven't been one for a long time. I can, after all this time, boy, I can tell you the difference in how I feel. Like, I can't believe I did it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I can't, like, I cannot believe I did it. And so if you are a smoker and you've been wanting to quit, 
maybe this is the podcast that you've been looking for. Uh, and, and if you're a smoker, you've been wanting to quit and you, you, you don't even realize how miserable you are right now. That's what I can tell you. But from my experience, <laughs> I didn't, I was, I became so used to how cloudy I felt and how awful I felt and how like, you know what I mean? And how you smelled, how you, how you was, smelled all the taste that, in your everything. mouth. Yeah. Yes. None of it was great. All of it. <laughs> I can tell you like, but moving away from it and being gone uh, apart from it for as long as I have been, I can't imagine ever going back uh, to, to that lifestyle. Now I do have a different scenario. I'm lucky enough to know I actually can't because if I do, I'll be back in the hospital. Only know that. But, uh, but there is something to be said for the fact that I can attest to what it is to be a smoker and what it is to not be a smoker. And if you are a smoker and you've been wanting to quit now, if you don't want to, and you're and you're you're happy with yourself, that's your business. I don't want to get yeah, in your business. I don't judgment. think you're. I don't think you're making a poor decision. I don't think you're stupid. I don't think any of those things. I'm talking to the people that want to quit. That's who I'm talking to. If you want to quit, you're smoking now, and you want to quit now. This can apply to a lot of different things, but I'm actually talking sp- specifically about smoking. Get get after it, man. Get after it. Just get started, and just be be okay with the fact that it's going to be uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. You're going to dream about it. You're gonna wonder what am I supposed to do with my hands now when I'm driving? Like all these, all those things are gonna are gonna happen. All of those will eventually go to rest. They will. Yeah. And and for some people, faster than others, it could take over a year. It could take longer. It could take two weeks. You don't know. But you're never gonna know unless you just do it. Yeah. Just do it. You know what I mean? You didn't just say try. Just, just, just yeah. I don't try. Do. Don't try to do it. Just stop smoking. Just stop. Yeah. Take the pack that you're looking at right now. Just throw it away and just be like, "This enough's enough." And when you get to the other side, of that, it, like I said, it could take a while, man. It could take a while. But when you get to the other side, and then somebody says, and you, and you go to a doctor appointment, and they ask you, are, "Are you a smoker?" You don't have to have that uncomfortable moment of either saying, "No, I'm not," in line, or saying yes and realizing you just told the doctor that you smoke. You don't have to. You know, you can actually. In full confidence, say no. I don't. I don't smoke. Yeah. That that was probably that might be one of my most favorite moments of having quit all those many years ago was when I went to the doctor and they were like, "Are you a smoker?" And I said, "No," and it was like, "Whoa, I'm actually not." It's actually been years. Like, and this was years mm-hmm. ago, and at the time it had been years, and I was like, "Wow, I can actually confidently like, yeah, I'm not." Like, I, I took that moment. If it was a week it. after you had quit, you might be like, "I'm trying. I'm trying." To I'm. Cu- I probably would have said, right? I'm, "I'm cutting your back. mind." Yeah. yeah. Which would have been counterintuitive if you're at a party, you can say, no, I don't smoke. But it, the doctor needs to know. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, like, yeah. are you a smoker? No. You're like, I, I, I quit yesterday. No. They, they, they can, like, smell <laughs> you got, cigarettes. You're finishing you. your last one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're going to get away with that. <laughs> so let's, let's get back to something else that we kind of talked about. It, it, when I brought up, like, oh, people can uh, make things bigger in their head than it really is and that can become scary to approach i i do that we want to talk about procrastination right you're talking about procrastination with your setup Mm. i do procrastinate on a lot of stuff and as most people do i'm sure and but when what i find is when i actually go and do the task that i procrastinated on nine times out of ten i'm like why why did i make a mole uh, uh, mountain out of, mountain a, mole out of a molehill, yeah. right? Why did I? Why did I think that was going to be some big undertaking that I had anxiety about, or that was going to take so much time? Let me tell you a story. You ready? Yeah. Okay. And I haven't told anybody else this story except for my wife because it's kind of embarrassing. So I'm gonna get real, uh, real uh, comfortable here. So <laughs> TwitchCon, yeah, was like October, two months ago, th- almost three months ago now, right? And there was this part where I was doing the autographs on a panel, you know, thing, and there was a line of people, and and uh, I was I was real nervous about talking to all these people that were going to come in front of me as I signed autographs that my breath was going to stink. Mm. So I noticed that you had a stick of gum, or you had a pack of gum, and I asked you for a, a stick of gum. You gave me a stick of gum. I'm like, great, okay, this. Uh, and I'm not. I don't chew gum like ever, mm-hmm. and I, I I think I maybe forgot why. <laughs> I, you know, but I was reminded during this, and I'll tell you what happened. Ooh, so I start spicy. chewing, I start chewing the stick uh, gum, you know, and I'm like, okay, great, I got, my breath is good. I have chewing gum. Oh yeah, I kind of miss chewing gum. This is nice. And then as I'm chewing, all of a sudden, I feel like like a rock in my mouth. All of a sudden, what? And I'm like, 
and I'm like so I like bite down and I kind of like crunch down on this like like what I thought was like a rock. I was like, how did a rock get in my mouth? And then I was reminded that many years ago I broke a tooth and had like a cap put on. No. So I had a crown. I think they call it right. I had a crown and like a very back bottom tooth, and I was like. And it, and the gum had kind of like sucked it off, oh. right? Because it's they like glue it to what's left when you break a tooth. Oh, right? this is the worst. And and so I reach in my mouth. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's people waiting in line to get my autograph, and I reach in my mouth and I pull out the crowd. It's like basically half a tooth, and I'm like, oh, this is awkward, right? For so many people, this is awkward. Do they watch you do this. I Some little kids like, can I, I have don't. Your I. I think I was like nonchalant about it enough. Like I think what I did was like I kind of there was a bottle of water underneath the table, and I kind of like went down to like grab the bottle of water, and I kind of like pulled the crown out and like oh. like hit it, you know, down there. And, and so I don't think I I don't think anybody saw it, but I didn't tell anybody about this. Um, and so I just kind of dealt with it for the rest of the weekend, you know, like yeah. like if you ever like had a tooth break or or whatever, um, it's sensitive. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. like when cold hits it oh, yeah. and, and stuff like that, it's it's real sensitive. It wasn't terrible for me. I was like, okay, I can figure out how to deal with this. Like as I'm drinking cold water, cover my cover it up with my tongue, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. And it became, <laughs> but it's like kind of jagged. Anyway, so I I get back and I'm like, I should probably call the dentist and get this cap put back on because or the crown put back on because you know this is bad. It's bad to have this exposed and it's. It sucks because it's cold and hot and, and stuff. It's real sensitive. And that's all I needed to do was just get into the dentist and have it put back on because I still had it. I didn't lose it, luckily. Didn't swallow it. So you still have the actual crown. Yeah, still have it. And they and they'll just I know what they'll do. They'll just they'll glue it back on. That's what they do. I, I think Well maybe it, maybe you did lose some weight and the crown doesn't fit you anymore. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so like here's the problem. This happened like two months ago, and I'd been meaning to call the dentist ever since. You know, and I just kept thinking, oh, man, it's going to take all this time. And I gotta go in and, and all this stuff. And, and I just wouldn't even do it. I wouldn't even just pick up the phone uh, and to call. And then finally, what happened was the other day, I got a notification that I'm due for a cleaning. Like the regular, like, mm. you know, I think I go twice a year. I, I'm due for a cleaning. And I'm like, oh, I can't go have them do a cleaning when I have half a tooth, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that's gonna really hurt. That's gonna be bad news. I was like, so I guess I have no choice, dude. Just sit in the chair, then pop it in your mouth and go, "Ooh, something just happened." Back <laughs> yeah, there. It just <laughs> happened. So I was like, "Oh man, now I don't think I have much choice." So I'm like, "All right." So I call him, and I was like, "Hey, I got this appointment coming up, but I lost my crown. You know, it came off anyway. I have it." And and they're like, "Can you come in like right now?" They like wanted me to just go in right now and, and get it taken care of. Because it was that critical or yeah. because they had the availability? Well, because they had the availability and I think they are worried about, you know, your did health. You, did you, you tell know? them it's been off for months? No. Yeah. <laughs> I was too embarrassed that I waited so long to do this call. Sure, sure. Uh, what I said was it happened over the holidays. In my mind, that was just twisting That's the truth. Just a, uh, because uh, that, that October, late October, Halloween is there. That's a holiday. I'm going to find out who your dentist is. I'm <laughs> sending him this podcast. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I couldn't go in right then, and now I'm due to go in on uh, on Monday to get it taken okay, care of. there you go. And then I got to go back in on Tuesday for the cleaning. Oh, my God. Wait. So, they're not going to want – don't they want the glue to settle longer? Maybe. Than, uh, yeah. We'll find out when I go in. But anyway, the, uh, the, the point of the story was when I called and it was like – a less than two minute call and now i'm booked to go in and get this thing yep. taken care of which yep. is going to take less than an hour of my life um not a big deal but i've been dealing with this discomfort for almost three months now because i procrastinated that yep. i procrastinated that and i may have made things i may have made like irreparable damage right like either to my tooth itself that's been exposed or they made to go put put the crown on and Things have changed, like you said, sure. to where they can't just glue it back on. Now they got to like mold a whole new crown or whatever they Could do. Be. You know what I mean? So I've I've made the problem that much more worse because I procrastinated. Because in my mind, this was going to be a big effort yeah. to fix, and I just couldn't be bothered. I have too much other stuff to do. I'm too busy. I have, uh, I can't miss a stream for yeah. them to fix my tooth. You know, like my priorities are completely out of whack. And, and in my brain, because I had made it bigger than it was, I was afraid to do it. I was afraid to make the call. 
you know? Wow. But yeah, realizing after I hung up the phone, I'm like, man, I'm an idiot. Like that took no time at all. And they're just like, come in big, you know, let's fix it and it'll be done. So yeah, I think, I think that's personally, I do that a lot. I don't know if you do. No, that's very good. That's very good. Cause that's a whole nother level of what it is to procrastinate. Right. There's, there's, if you, we're, we were originally talking about the fact that procrastinating was holding back what it is that you want to make happen. But then there's this other version of procrastinating is only making it worse. Yeah, I, it's yeah. making it worse, man. And that's, and that's, I can, I can, I can dig that. And I, and I, I have more stories of that than I would like to admit. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I just, I put it off for so long. I'm like, oh boy, this, actually, here's a good one. Open enrollment at work was like a handful of months ago, right? But if they do it a couple months before the turn of the this new year. This is where you can like change your health benefits That's and correct. stuff, right? Yeah. And I don't need to change anything, right? I'm just like, just leave it all the same. If you, it, it says the open enrollment is in this window. And if you want to change something, here you go. If not, everything will just go back to the way it was. I'm like, I don't want to change anything. I'm going to leave it. However, what I also know is that HSA, which is a high deductible plan, is something that you have to reinvigorate every year. For some reason, you can say, keep everything the same, but that specific piece you need to reinvigorate every year. I'm pretty sure, I mean, it'd be a lot easier on me if I would just do it during open enrollment, but I didn't. You know what I mean? Because every year I'm like, yeah, I just wait till the turn of the new year. And I just, because you can just at any time during the year anyway. So who cares? So I put it off. Well, now I'm like, like, that's it. I don't have it anymore. And because they changed something. All I had to do was just do it during open. It would have taken oh, no. me 10 minutes, but I kept putting it off because I had something else more important in my own mind. Yeah. I kept putting it off. And now I've been it, removed from the program. So I have to have some sort of weird, long conversation with somebody in HR. Let's get, you know, like all that just because I put it off. It would have been a 10 minute job. The same thing with the network stuff, dude. I, I just let it sit there. And why I installed the AP, physically installed the AP in my ceiling. And I just needed to run a cable from the AP. And along the wall, like with all the wire management things, down the wall, through a hole in the wall that I made into my office, and then fish it over. It's like a 30-minute job. Why did my why did it take me a week to carve out the time? Once I got started, I was done in 30 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just one of those things. And I bet like, you felt great. Like I felt great. You, every time you finish a, a project yeah. like this, it's yeah. just like, oh, man, if I could have just bottled that feeling yeah. and just got a little taste of it when yeah. I was thinking about maybe potentially <laughs> doing the thing, yeah. then you'd probably do it. You yeah. know what I mean? My, my poor family walking around this ladder for a week, you know what I mean? <laughs> the ladder was there. Because <laughs> it's, it's high up. But in any case, it was, uh, <sighs> it's, it's very good to have all this time go by from the first episode and reflect on on what it was and because we've had our own learnings. And I think that we've landed on a couple things here that there really is the procrastination piece of it and just go get started. If you want to quit smoking, you want to do that. I mean, you actually have to be somebody who wants to, if you don't, I can't say this enough. I don't think you're dumb. I don't like people are like smokers are stupid. I don't like that stuff. If you, if you want to, you want to quit and this is something that's important to you, then it's time to just get going now. Stop putting it off because this yeah. is a classic example of the more you put it off, the harder you're making everything on yourself. It's doing more damage. The addiction continues to grow like it's it's all more time you're losing more of your life that you could have been a non-smoker and all that stuff. So, just just get the do the baby steps. Just get going on it, man. I this is God. This is I'm so frustrated because I I'm, so, I'm thinking about the, the my background in my in my office right now. Like if I just ripped that green screen <laughs> down and just did what I need, maybe I don't know if I'm gonna do. I can't sign up for that yet. Maybe I will. Just do like your uncle did, dude. Take the sledgehammer. The thing is, the wall is like this. Awful baby blue color. Perfect. But that's what perfect. They, the more the worse <laughs> it is, the better. Because you then you won't do even a single stream until you fix it. You know what I mean? <laughs> what is what is the uh what's the thing in Phasmophobia we find that if you light all the candles it summons the ghost? What's that thing? Yeah, called? the summoning circle. The summoning circle. circle. I'm gonna paint the summoning circle on the wall, be like, see, that's why there's a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good, actually. This is a very good idea. Do I dare do that? I don't want to do that to my amazing audience. They're gonna they're the ones who have to look at me with that stupid background. Yeah, but that's that's gonna motivate you. Yeah, it's already to starting. give them something to it's better, right? Yeah. Like you gotta you gotta find uh a, if, in, make your own catalyst. Yeah. That's that's what it is. You know? And I wonder how many other things that can apply to, you know. That might take some 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 real deep thought on how you can inject an artificial catalyst that will get you moving yeah. when you don't want to. Ooh, you know? good one. A good one. Swing the pickaxe. 
Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, do something that makes it irreversible to where you don't have a choice now. Yeah. And I've done that before. I really have done that before. Like, projects at work is, I'm like, I want to re rewire this or redo this. And I just, like, cut the cable. I'm like, oh, I got to do now. Yeah. And, you know, I've done that before. And it works. It has huge, it has huge benefits. You know what I mean? Like, did we, we did we do, we did. We did a, a podcast on addiction, didn't we? Maybe. Something related to it anyway. Maybe. I think I talked about. I don't remember now, but my brother <laughs> went through. I don't remember. But okay, my, here's the next thing we're pulling the trigger on. We are making that list, list of every topic that yes, we've done yes. so that we can review that and we don't have to sit here going, do we have a I podcast know. on this? Oh, my God, dude. People, you have to understand, our the way we do it is we have a shared document where when an idea kind of strikes us uh, and like we, we fancy a new concept that could be a podcast topic, we throw it on there and typically text the other person like, hey, what do you think of this? I'm like, oh, we can put this spin on it. My, my, my mom just asked me like two days ago, like, how do you guys come up with your ideas? I'm like, oh, it's a shared document. We need to get organized. We need, and we will. We yeah, will. we haven't like crossed off the ones we've done on that. They're yeah. just still there. Yeah. You know, and we don't, yeah. The only way that I, I know like what we've done already is if I go to YouTube and like look at yeah, our yes, video dude. feed. Yeah. <laughs> and like even that cut off. Before I could like get back to the first couple ones we did, I had to like right. So my well, my point being that the reason I asked about the addiction piece was because this is a good example of when my brother had to come off of oxy. Mm -hmm. Actually, I know we did it because yeah, I said did. I'll ask his forgiveness later. I do yeah. know, and he he had to in order to get his back surgery. Um, and he was so unbelievably hooked that he he contacted all the pharmacies and put himself on a list, a no sell list. And they uh, they do that. That that's kind of that's yeah, swing that's the pickaxe. It. Yeah, he, you know what I mean. He had that. Yeah, the catalyst was like the, they have to stop me now. I, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. You got to find a way. Do what Sometimes you do. it's a. Fit. I was, I had this like all these bug bites on my leg. This is like years ago. I went camping and some sort of bug took a liking to me and I just was got lit up on my leg. It was so itchy. And then you fast forward a, a week and I was at a softball outing. I'm scratching my leg and my buddy. It's like, you have to stop doing that. You're going to infect yourself. Just let it heal. I'm like, it's so itchy. He's like, that's it. Every time you scratch your leg, I'm punching you. You know what I mean? I'm like, what? And he's like, you, ha you have to stop. So we're sitting there, and I'm like, do this. I didn't even think about it. I scratch yeah. and come, and he just slugs me in the arm. I'm like, ah, man. He's like, every time, dude. It was like an hour, and I stopped scratching. I needed a, like, so you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he put that catalyst in there. He made it to a <laughs> negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement, like yeah. I know, I know everybody's always wanting to do Oh, you should do positive reinforcements, right? But what was he going to do? Give you a cookie every time you didn't scratch your leg? <laughs> <No>. Super fat. <laughs> er. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. He, he Doesn't was, work that way. He was that's, just looking for that, reasons to punch me. Yeah. I, I did thinking. it to him, too. He used to do this thing where he, he, was, uh, he was the father of one of the other girls, and we were really good friends. And uh, he used to do this thing, like, when the more we became brotherly, he just... I don't know why. When I wasn't looking, he grabbed my leg hair and just like pull it out of my. And it's because oh. him and his brothers would mess mess with themselves like that. And I'm like, dude, I swear to you, do that again. I'm hitting you, dude. It hurts so bad. He's laughing, and then he did it again, uh, and I hit him. And he also did this thing where I we'd be getting out of our car, and he pull his truck up like inches from me without me knowing, and honk the horn. I'm like, when you do that again, I'm slugging you up. And and I did. And so like you have to sometimes you need that extra motivation to not do violence something. isn't the answer, everyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets that's what that, that whole segment yeah. sounded like. Fear's a bigger driver than we'd like to admit. <laughs> All right, uh, thanks so much for sticking around with us. And again, this is we, it's very important to us that we don't come off preachy. This is actually a really, really big deal. We we say these yeah. things because actually it's your fault because we had that fun <laughs> podcast and you guys gave us amazing feedback and it's been uh, one heck of a year that obviously we're, we're we're grateful for. But when we say these things, it's just our thoughts. And we would like to see you guys do what you know is best for you. We don't know. We're just yeah. using these examples and our thoughts and our feelings. Uh, but you be you and you do your thing. And hopefully if and you have to keep in mind, how about it? A lot of these people have no idea what we're talking about. They don't know what we're talking about because they didn't they weren't around for the first one. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. A, yeah. If you kind of feel like you, you missed out on something there. Um, second podcast we ever did. It is on the channel. If you search for it, it's called What's Stopping You. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it, we just wanted to to revisit in a way and spend some new light on it based off of uh, things that have come in, in, into our minds since then, over yep. a year and a half ago or whatever it was. So, yep. uh, yeah. Anyway, good luck to everybody that's uh, attempting something new, a new habit or, or whatever it is that, that you want to do, the next step you want to take. Um, 
And you know? if you have tricks of your own on how to get started, oh, yeah. share it in the comments section because you guys also are a huge support structure for one another. So yeah. share it in the comments sure. section. Of, if you have your own tricks, you might. I, honestly, I have a feeling somebody's going to put something in the comments that's going to make me like, be like, I can't believe I didn't think of that. Yeah. Uh, but here we are. So enjoy it. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. See ya.